recording now. Again, sorry, I forgot. So we are recording now. So we are starting with um, Land of Sad Oranges, short story written by Ghassan Kanafani, narrated, uh, presumably, we will discuss this, by a child. His story about the Nakba. Uh, whose Nakba is it? It is my Nakba. Is your Nakba. Of course, some of you might argue that we do not belong to the Nakba generation, but we are we have inherited the Nakba. Either consciously or subconsciously, the, the life conditions we are living right now um, had been created by the Nakba itself. The fact that most of us are refugees, the fact that we live um, under medieval siege, the Gaza Strip is the product of the Nakba. 72 years of an ongoing Nakba. So what is going to happen when we read this story? We want to go back, sorry, some people are joining us. We want to go back to the origin and look at the Nakba from the perspective, and this is very important, narrator who is the narrator when you read the story that is your first homework i want you to address this question who is the narrator um do we know his name how old is he is he a child and if the story is narrated from the point of view of a child, why? Why a child? Um, can't, can't an adult, can't an adult um, narrate the story of the Nakba? Notice, guys, and this is the point about this course. Yes, it is comparative literature, but it deals also with the context, the context within which the stories, the texts, that we are going to be studying the context within which these texts are written. So, the land of sad oranges. Of course, the title is very important. We will come to that after you read the story. We will have our first discussion next time after, after you read the story. So, we want to look at the context. What is the context within which the story is written? Of course, the first thing is you want to say, all right, the context here the Nakba definitely and therefore is it's a political sorry I need to admit a new purpose okay the context political but what I'm interested in is that it is not only political socio-political meaning what socio-political meaning social and political social and political the, the narrator the narrator and his family when you read the story, you will tell me about his family. And next time, inshallah, I want you to open your mics one by one. Tell me your understanding of the story. That the, the narrator and um, his family belong to a particular, particular social class. A particular social class. What is that social class? Social us mainly in our modern society our modern society which is capitalistic we live in a capitalist world and in the capitalist world mainly we have two major classes the bourgeoisie or rather the middle class and the working class well does he the narrator or his family rather they belong to the bourgeoisie definitely most Palestinians before the Nakba belong a completely most. I'm not saying all, by no means. I'm not saying all. Most Palestinians belong to a class before the Nakba and they changed their social class or they were forced, rather, they were forced to change their social class after, after, after the Nakba. So, what is, what is the social class that? narrator belongs to. And by the way, before I forget, uh, some of you uh, confuse 
the narrator with the writer. I am not talking about the writer. And in fact, in fact, I'm not interested. I am not interested in the writer. The writer, Allah yarhamu. So when you discuss the story with me, don't say Ghassan Kanafani means this or means that. I cannot say Ghassan Kanafani means this or he means that because he's, he's dead. Ghassan Kanafani is dead. I mean, and how can you be so sure that this is what Ghassan Kanafani means? Of course, he's dead. Therefore, it only depends on our interpretation as readers. So what we are talking about here, we are talking about what the narrator means. So we need to forget about the writer. I am not interested. Of course, if you, you should know something about Ghassan Kanafani. Of course, a martyr, Shaheed, Allah yarhamu. He was killed in 1972 by the Israeli Mossad with his niece, Layla, um, booby trap, they bombed his car, we trapped his car because, because of his ideas. I mean, this is a writer, this is a writer who was targeted by apartheid Israel. The word apartheid, al apartheid, apartheid Israel, we will talk about this. He was killed, but it has nothing to do with our story. I'm telling you this. <coughs> Because I know that uh, most of you are interested and because we are Palestinian and because we want to know about our cause, we want to know as to why Israel has been targeting, I would call Ghassan Kanafani, Edward Saeed, Mahmoud Darwish, uh, Mu'in Teso, uh, Tawfiq Zayad, I'm sure most of you are familiar with these names, intellectuals, because um, they represent they represent the Palestinian mind. Me, um, the names I have just mentioned, the names I have just mentioned, represent, and I want you. Sometimes I will use words, definitions. I want you to look out. I want you to look out these definitions uh, online, use dictionaries, but look, I'm not asking about meanings of words, guys. I'm asking about definitions because I will be asking you the future define concept. So now the first, one of the first definitions I want you to look out is resistance literature. Uh, Mahmoud Darwish's literature, don't forget. Don't forget, we are studying active literature. So two definitions I want you to look out. I want you to find out about these definitions. What do we mean? I will not tell you. I mean, you are university students, but you will have to find out. When you find out, you can discuss with me. Yeah. But again, some of you who know me and who know my courses, um, I don't want you to memorize. Don't forget this. I don't want you to memorize, I want you to understand. I really want you to understand. And I am really interested, those of you who are interested in knowing more and more, not only about our course, but you know, political issues, social issues that we can discuss, but related to our course. So two definitions, two definitions. One, comparative literature, and that is the title, that's the title of our course. Comparative literature. Excuse me. The second, uh, sorry, people are joining. The, the, the second term is resistance literature. Right? I'm going to write it. I'm going to write it. And I want you make, and I want to make sure that you know how to say the term resistance literature, and I want you to find out the definition. What do we mean by resistance literature? The story that you will read, which I'm going to upload in Moodle, is titled The Land of Sad Oranges, which is part of resistance literature. Of course, you know the word resistance. Of course, you know the word resistance. But what I'm interested in is resistance literature. What makes text 
part of resistance literature. Of course, there are many, many Palestinian texts, Palestinian literature, in South African literature, in Kenyan literature. Now, there are many texts that have been written. Poetry, uh, you know, drama, fiction. But we cannot say that everything that is written in producing Palestinian literature, South African literature, is part of resistance literature. So I want you to tell me, why do we call it resistance literature? Okay, I'm writing it for you. You will find out. And what I'm going to do, in addition, <clears throat> I'm going to post some references for you as well on, um, on Moodle, on the, the discussion forum, about resistance literature. Uh, some texts, rather, analysis, analysis of the text itself, of the land of sad oranges. I myself, I have written a couple of um, analytical pieces. I will post one or two of them. I will uh, post something about resistance literature. And then we finish uh, with Ghassan Kanafani. We will discuss as to why we consider it part of what we call um, comparative literature. Well, you know, the first thing I want you to understand is that, um, yes, it is part of resistance literature, but notice, I'm not saying resistance because it's about resisting occupation. No, 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 no. That's, that's not the only thing. Of course not. I'm not asking about the meaning of resistance. I'm asking about the concept of resistance literature. Um, it is part and parcel of what we call post-colonial literature. Post-colonial literature. So. Um, what is post-colonial literature? Another definition. What is post-colonial literature? And the fact that I'm starting with a post-colonial text, with a post-colonial short story, is that, okay, pay attention to what I'm saying. Pay attention, because you need to understand this as part of comparative literature. Post-colonial literature, notice, post, this is a prefix, all right? And colonial, uh, Okay, I don't know what your name is, Galaxy. Galaxy, if you can't hear me, the others can hear me. Maybe your internet connection. The others can hear me. Okay, but I'm recording this. We will post it. I'm recording it, and we will post it. Okay, but let me let me um, let me not be. You can interrupt me, of course, if you can't hear me. All of you cannot hear. Me. Um, but I will open. I will allow you to ask me whatever you want in a second. Um, Post-colonial literature, Sabaya Wiya Shabab, is by nature comparative. So Post-colonial literature, okay, a very simple, very, very simple definition. This is direct, but this is not the definition I want. Fair? This is not the definition I want. But I'm looking at the term itself, post-colonial, which means after colonialism, correct? Post, you know the prefix, suffix, etc. This is a prefix. Post colonial, that which comes after. So it's the literature which has been and is still being written, of course, after the end of colonialism. I am not interested in that definition, but I'm just explaining the direct meaning. Okay? I want you to give me a better. Definition. I want you to give me a better definition. So post-colonial literature. But the, the question is, Ghassan Kanafani's literature, can it be considered post-colonial? We are still, we Palestinians are still under colonialism. Colonialism. Meaning what? The direct, notice the definition, the definition of colonialism, direct military occupation. Israel has been occupying Palestine since 1948. How many years? 
72. 72 years, the Stein has been their direct military occupation. But international law is not saying the same thing. What is under direct military occupation, according to international law, is the Gaza Strip and the West Bank. Gaza, the West Bank. So what about uh, Nazareth and Nasr? Ashkelon, El Majdal, Haifa, Haifa. Well, what they are saying, according to international law, what Israel, the system, the system, the political system, Israel is exercising is apartheid. 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 Direct African yes. Apartheid like what used to be the system that they used to have in South Africa. Of course, everybody knows South Africa. So what we have here, we have occupation, and we have apartheid. All right, so the question now, is Israel's colonialism, sorry, people are still joining, okay. Um, Israel's occupation of Palestine, is it, is it classical colonialism or different kind of colonialism? Pay attention, this is important for your story, Sabaya Um Is it like the, the, the British colonization, for example, of India? Is it like uh, English colonialism in um, in, Engl in, um, in Egypt, or like French colonialism of Algeria, American colonialism of America, um, white colonialism of South Africa? I clear. Which means we have two kinds of colonialism. What we are witnessing what we are witnessing rather the form of colonialism israel has been exercising against the palestinian people is settler colonialism so we are not talking about here direct only direct military occupation where you have a government a country sending soldiers occupy other country. That's what colonialism is. Direct military occupation. Directly. Before Israel, yes, the Stein was under British colonialism. Their British colonialism. But the, the Zionist movement, the Zionist movement um, has started the process of settler colonization this time. Settler colonialism. Okay. Writing this, you need to look up definitions, okay? Right, so I am interested in finding out the difference, differences between colonialism and settler colonialism. And then we will understand our story. We will read it, um, analyze it, interpret it, understand it understand it when i say understand it what i mean is understand it within political social or rather socio-political context and the political context is settler colonialism the social context we'll talk about it when we start reading it so that is the introduction Sabaya. then we will discuss together next time why this is comparative literature inshallah after after we finish with Ghassan Kanathani, because Arabic literature related to not only English literature, when we discuss comparative literature, it doesn't mean that we only compare, you know, in a naive way, very naively, in a way, you know, this to the great English texts we know. No, 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 no. For example, we will look at, um, or rather we will read together, 
another short story from Senegal. Fascinating short story by a great, great man. His name is Sembene Osmane. The title is Black Girl. And it's also a movie. You will see the movie. I will ask you to see the movie. Black Girl. It's about racism. Racism. Then we will uh, move, notice, from Palestine. I'm sure you understand the map. We we'll move from Palestine, Senegal, which is Eastern Africa. Then we will go to Somalia. Somalia. Somalia, Somalia. And look at how many languages we are using here. And then inshallah, we'll hope we'll compare those texts, those texts, a great Russian text, Anton Chekhov, Anton Chekhov's story, uh, a short story by Anton Chekhov. Lament, hopefully. We'll compare it to that story. Um, what is left? So that is just Sabaya, we Shabab introduction what i want from you in these in these classes i want you to respect the virtual class be as professional as possible listen to what i'm what i'm saying i said to you don't start by saying what is the exam going to be like exam exam this is not about exams this is not about exams i want you to enjoy this course i want you when you finish this course to say i have learned something I wanted to say that you have learned something. Now, I will turn, I will stop recording because this is the first class. If you have any questions, ask me, and then I will tell you something about an activity we are doing online for those who are interested. Those who are interested, I will tell you about it. Activity we are doing on Friday and on Saturday. But, um, the thing is that we will have these uh, virtual classes line when because I'm supposed to have one class in the morning one class in the evening because of electricity now I have electricity I am thinking that today is what is today Tuesday today is Tuesday I think uh, today is Wednesday oh sorry 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 today is Wednesday um, which means we will have another class on Monday. I don't know whether I will have electricity in the morning or in the afternoon, but I will send you a message. I will send you a message. Uh, Galaxy, I don't know who Galaxy, Galaxy J2, oh, he's not, or he's not writing his name. I want to know her name or his name. You have an internet connection problem, not us. Okay, um, let's, let's decide to have um, our next class on um, on monday on monday tomorrow okay i will upload this i will upload this online this is the first time i'm doing it by the way so i will find out how to upload it if one of you knows Uthman, Uthman is with us i think you know Uthman, you will tell me or anybody else um will upload this and then we'll also upload um the story the story for you Land of Sad Oranges. We'll also upload another another extra material. Then on Monday, inshallah, we meet again, and I will see either in the morning or in the evening. And I want you to have the text with you because we will be reading together. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do a, a textual analysis. Textual analysis, meaning that we will read. Um, you no, know, line by line, okay. textual analysis, all right? Of course, and contextual, textual and contextual. Context, I have already started talking about the context. And inshallah, um, on Monday, we'll start doing, you know, textual analysis. Um, okay, let me, let me stop uh, recording now about 40 minutes. Um, I will stop recording and I have to learn how to do this. Okay, I found out. Then if you have any questions, you can one by one, right? Open your mic, ask me your question. I want you to discuss anything with you, anytime, no problem. Send me messages. Line here, you can discuss with me, but it has to be in English. In English. 
no Arabic. I mean, you are studying English, this is an advanced course, and we will use only English. Okay, everybody? Okay, I will stop recording and then